Okay. So, hello, welcome again, everybody. It's good to see some of your faces. Um, and I know most of you, which is awesome. Um, but for those of you who don't know me um, and I don't know you, I'm Catherine Calhoun Cutshaw. I'm the collections manager in the North Carolina room here at Pack Memorial Library, which I'm in right now. If you can't see, woo, it's so nice to be in the library itself. I'm sorry, you all can't be here. Um, it smells like old books, just as it should. Um, so today we're going to go over one of, I think, the best visual resources that the North Carolina Room and most Buncombe County libraries, most libraries in the state have to offer, um, and that is Ancestry Library Edition. Um, and we're also going to look at a form of Ancestry Library Edition called Heritage Quest, which is available on NC Live. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so you can see what we're going to do. There we go. Okay. I'm going to get this out of the way. Oh, it won't let me. That's the best I can do. Okay. So, um, Ancestry Library Edition. This is what it looks like when you first get there. And I'm going to show you, this is Heritage Quest as well. Those are just the front pages. Um, but how do you get to these places initially? We're going to go to just do a quick Google search. Buncombe County Libraries. That's how I always get there. You can um, go to the, the proper website if you want. Click on Buncombe County Public Libraries, and this is just our public landing page for the library. I'm going to scroll down here and click on Virtual Library. This is going to give me lots of options. Um, this will take you to the card catalog, the online catalog. This will take you to OverDrive, the digital library, where you can check out digital library books. NC Live, which I think most of you are familiar with, and um, it's books and magazines and newspapers and um, databases of all kinds of information, consumer reports, and then of course the North Carolina Rooms database page. Um, when we scroll down, we've got featured resources, and this is how you're going to get into Ancestry Library if you're doing it from home. Um, so you'll click here, and that will generally take you to a login page, um, but because I'm on the county Wi-Fi, it just skips right over that. Um, but you'll have to log in with your library card number and your PIN. If you don't have a Buncombe County Library card, we are making them right now virtually. Um, so you can email library at buncombecounty.org requesting a library card, just be sure to include some sort of proof of residence in there. Um, and then right below it is Heritage Quest. You can also get to Heritage Quest through NC Live if you just want to spend some time in there looking around and seeing what there is to see. So we'll start with Ancestry Library Edition. Let that person in. So Ancestry Library is usually only offered at the library itself. You have to be here in the building on one of our research computers in the North Carolina room to use this service. Um, but because of the present situation, Ancestry has been super cool and decided to let those, um, those library systems that have an account um, offer this to their patrons at home. And it was through the month of April, but I found out this morning it's now through the month of May at least. Um, so you'll have plenty of time to access this and use it um, and find out what all there is to find out in here. So um, Ancestry, for those of you who have used Ancestry.com, the, the normal, um, you know, I personal, I paid for this Ancestry, Ancestry Library is pared down a lot. Um, and Heritage Quest, even more so after that. So um, Ancestry Library is free. Um, you can use it at home or here at the library, like I just said, but um, you're going to miss out on some of the ease of use type of things um, that Ancestry um, Regular, we'll call it, Ancestry Regular has to offer. Um, and the first thing you'll probably notice is that over here you usually have trees and the trees function is gone. Um, you can't save people to this account because it's a big and institutional account. 
So what I'll do is just show you around the site, the home page, just a little bit, and then we can go into some tips and tricks. So this is the home, and it prompts you to begin searching. It sort of shows off what one of their more well-used collections is, this U.S. Census records. It's got some quick links here. You'll notice you still can see trees that do exist on Ancestry, but they have to be public. There's not a way for you to um, message people on this Ancestry platform. And when you log in, it'll probably say Buncombe County Public Libraries up here as well. So if you can't actually make a tree um, using this particular version of Ancestry, how are you going to keep up with your research? Um, and they do make it easy and they send out some They've got some things here on the site that will, will help with that. So um, the first thing we're going to look at is this Charts and Forms tab. So under Charts and Forms, um, they give you all of these wonderful little downloadable PDFs. Um, so an ancestral chart, like a family tree, a research calendar to help you keep up with your research, an extract to write notes on your research for those of you who do um, index cards. These are basically pre-filled out index cards. They've got this correspondence record here so you can keep up with all those distant cousins or uh, family members you're talking to. A family group sheet and those are like um, the pedigree of a, a specific person. I'll help you trace that back. Some summaries here. So these are all really helpful to help organize your research. Um, I'm sure all of us have different ways of doing it, but these are here for ease and convenience. Um, so don't forget that those are there. The next thing I wanna point out is the Learning Center tab. So there are tons of videos from ancestry and genealogical research experts um, that they will direct you to here as, as well as some just libguides, some research guides um, that are I found really, really helpful. Um, so they've got them sort of categorized into immigration and military, ethnic, um, pushing yourself beyond the basics. So this is like advice on things like religious records, um, you know, death records, military, um, although they've taken more and more military off of Ancestry and put it onto their sister service fold three, so I don't know exactly how much is left on Ancestry anymore. Um, and then some information about the different censuses, which is really helpful um, because every census is different. They also have these maps here. So let's just click on North Carolina. And it's going to go ahead and group all of the North Carolina records together for you, or the most well-used ones anyway, um, and show you a county map of the state and give you a quick overview of the state's history, letting you know that its first census was in 1790. We were a colony, um, but if we were in Missouri, you know, it might say your first census is 1740. Um, or 1840, excuse me, <laughs> um, and it talks about things that might be missing from different sets of information. So be sure to use this map um, if you're looking for records for a state that you're really not familiar with, um, or if you just want to explore a little bit. It's kind of fun to look at Alaska and see what Alaska might have going on, um, what kinds of records they might have. And each state has different records. Um, the message boards that are on the regular Ancestry um, are visible here. So you can read through these message boards. boards. Um, let's say you're looking for something really specific or you're researching an ancestor in the Revolutionary or Civil War and you want to find out more detailed information about their unit. Um, these message boards are, are full of that kind of information. So they've got a keyword search here, um, or you can search surnames by alphabetical order. And then, of course, they've just got some categories here. Um, you know, if you're really into genealogy software, you can come here and read up 
um, if you're into doing um, cemetery indexing, they've got plenty of, of conversations going about that. So that's another feature of Ancestry Library. And the last thing I want to point out that's across this ribbon here at the top is the new collections tab. So if you've been doing your research for a while um, and you feel like you've exhausted everything, coming and checking on this new collections tab is really helpful. Um, you can see on the left hand side here, they've got all of the different categories of information that you can narrow things down by. You can sort this list by the date it was updated or how many records there are so we could see what is the largest collection they have here. It's those member trees. And you can see the number of records in there. Some of these sets of records um, you could see, let's go back. You can see that it says new while others say updated. So this Alabama Episcopal Diocese of Alabama church records, this is brand new. Um, so if you've been working on, a, on an issue there, you've got 34,000 brand new records to sort through. You can also just keyword search. So um, for the title of the collection or just a regular keyword. So let's say I'm looking for things from South Carolina. I can search for South Carolina. It'll sort things that way. Or maybe even something more specific. So let's try Buncombe County. Ah, okay, so too specific. Let's go back to our South Carolina search. And this is going to just be a list, like I said, of, of new collections or updated collections that have anything to do with, with South Carolina. So you can see here, they might have updated the South Carolina records of the 1860 census. Updated slave schedules, World War II hospital admission card files. So this new collections tab is really nice if you've been working on something for a while. Um, and you're really running out of places to, to search, I recommend going to the new collection. So we'll just go back home. And so just as a reminder, when you log in, this is what it's going to look like. And there are a few little modules here on the front page. But the best thing to do is head to the search tab. I like to always choose all categories unless you're looking for something more specific. Um, if I'm doing a search on a person, but really quickly, we'll look at the full card catalog, which is very similar to the new collections tab. So this is everything in their card catalog, um, all of the different collections. So let's say I wanted to find a, a military record, um, and I wanted military records, from Nebraska. And now it's showing me all of the military records that have anything to do with the state of Nebraska. And you can narrow those things down even further, filtering it by collections within that particular category. So I want to know if somebody from Nebraska was killed in any kind of military action. And so this will give you those death records for troops from Nebraska. It's going to check our. Okay. Um, so let's do that search tab. We'll search in all categories. This is going to open up the big search page here. And there are so many different ways that you can search this particular. Um, version of Ancestry. Um, and it really all boils down to what you enjoy or how you're wanting to search or what exactly you are searching. Um, you can see here they've got this explore by location, which is similar to what we did in the card catalog by um, narrowing it down by state. 
they've got this card catalog module here and they just have some of the most popular collections listed here on the side. And then of course you have a, a pretty typical search box. So um, we'll just run a search for someone I know we will find um, and that there are a lot of records for. So I'm just going to look for David Vance. And I know that David Vance lived in Buncombe County, North Carolina, and it'll fill things in for you. Um, when you're searching for a particular place, always choose the suggested search um, because it's that's how they have things cataloged and so things are going to come up better that way and a birth year oh i guess 1780 or so but i don't know exactly so i'm going to choose this plus or minus 10 years or i could just uncheck that box altogether and let it guess um, it's better to give it a range so so we'll say plus or minus 10 years. And we know that this person's name is Vance. We know his first name is David. And you'll see too, this exact, you can choose exact and sounds like similar in initials. And, and I really recommend if you're searching for someone and you're not positive you're going to find records for them, leave it as broad as possible. Um, ancestry is, transcribed by um, human people and computers as well. So computers reading 19th century cursive sometimes spits out some pretty bizarre names. Um, so I recommend leaving things broad if you don't know you're going to find something. So here's our search for David Vance in Buncombe County, North Carolina, who was born around 1780. We'll hit search. And here is our search results. You can see that it's not really giving me exactly what I thought I was looking for. Um, so what I can do is this search filters here at the top, you can see you've got these sliding scales. We're going to open up that 1780 to really broad and take our Buncombe County and move it so that it's county and adjacent counties. So now I'll only get records from Buncombe, Madison, Henderson, McDowell counties, and I've opened up that, that um, birth date search a little bit. So we'll hit update. Okay, now here we go. So we found our particular David Vance. There he is, married in 1825 to Mira, Margaret Mira Baird. Often that's switched around. But anyway, so that's, that's how um, looking for individual people on Ancestry Library works. Um, let's pull up a record just so you can see how you can save records. We'll just use this one. So Ancestry will show you things um, in a couple of different ways and, uh, and all collections are different. Um, for the most part, you're looking at either those public member trees or something someone else has created or digitized microfilm records. Um, other times you're only going to get a text only index record that will lead you back to something else, somewhere else. And oftentimes those index records aren't even housed on Ancestry. You'll have to go hunt them down at your, your state library. Um, but in this case, we do have a, a microfilmed record. So we want to open it up to take a look, just to double check and make sure this is who uh, the record is about, who it says it's about. And we've got a, a big index here of people who were married in North Carolina. I'm going to see, sometimes it will even highlight, and I don't think it did this time. Sometimes it'll even highlight uh, the person that you are looking for. 
um, but it doesn't look like it did that in this case. We'll look for a different one that might do that. So let's say I wanted to save this. Um, on the, the regular or traditional version of Ancestry, you could save this to a specific person on your family tree, but because we don't have that function here, um, we can save a couple of different ways. So we'll click this save here in the top right hand corner. And we can either save this image directly to the computer that you're working on. And if it's your personal computer, then that's fine. Or you can choose send this image home. And it'll allow you to email this specific record to yourself and make it available to you anywhere. So um, you could type in your email there. It wants you to confirm it. And then you just hit send email. Okay. So, let me figure out how to get back to my chat here. There we go. And make sure there are no questions. Does anybody have any questions? Hmm. My chat's not showing up. I'm going to stop sharing for a second so I can check the chat. Okay. All right, no questions so far. All right. So we'll go back and um, take a look at Heritage Quest, that different, kind of even more pared down version. So that was Ancestry Library Edition. And we'll get that out of the way and go to Heritage Quest. Um, Heritage Quest is accessible right here under the Featured Resources tab of the Virtual Library on the library website. And you can also get to it through NC Live. And you'll notice that it is even more pared down than Ancestry Library Edition. Um, and this is something that is available to you all the time at home. Um, Ancestry Library Edition is being offered for home use right now during um, our stay at home time. Um, they've said that they'll leave it up accessible like that through the end of May, but Heritage Quest is always available. So you can always use Heritage Quest. Um, and you'll notice there are only two options here at the top. We can go home and that looks almost identical to the Ancestry Library homepage, except they've got some things, um, other some different things featured here. And they have this very helpful looking fellow here uh, pointing you toward different types of records. So we'll go to search. And you can see the search is even pared down quite a bit. Um, they want to point you towards specific collections rather than searching the entire um, database at once. They have this research aids tab, which is just like the tab that we looked at on Ancestry Library Edition, and it's called the Learning Center. So on Heritage Quest, it's simply called Research Aids, and the maps are the same thing as well. Go back to search. And this, like I mentioned just a second ago, it, it really wants you to search just one thing at a time, um, Heritage Quest does. So we'll search the census. And we have all of these options here to fill in to try to find someone very specifically. So um, I'm going to look for, oh, somebody I may or may not find. Let's look for um, this guy I know named Pless Calhoun. Okay. His, he was born somewhere around Kiowa. Oconee County, South Carolina, oh, about 1860 or so. 
I know he was born in Kiwi, and I know that his last name is definitely Calhoun, spelled this way. So I'm going to check those exact boxes. And you can also add some additional information here. Um, I happen to know that his father's name is Thomas Washington Calhoun. And that information can help a lot, especially if you're looking for someone whose name is like David Smith, right? Um, that's a very common name, and there are probably hundreds of thousands of different records for David Smiths um, from the beginning of time until now. So if you happen to know that David Smith's father's name was something like Hezekiah, uh, that might help you narrow down and find your particular David Smith. Um, in this case, both of these names are, are a little bit unique. Plus, plus is, is short for pleasant, and that's cer certainly more unique. Um, but adding this father here might help me find him more quickly. So there are other options here. Um, you know, if you're searching for someone who you know is African American, you can put the race designation here. Um, they want the designation that is on the particular census that you are looking for. So if you are looking for an African American person in an 1870 census, you should search for the term colored. Um, so, and, and vice versa. So if you're looking for someone um, further up, uh, let's say, well, you can't get into, into later than the 1950 censuses, um, but you might try um, Negro as well. That's going to help find records that have specifically to the, to the folks that you are, you are looking for. Um, so just use the terms that they would have used on the census, historical terms. You can also select the gender of the person if you're looking for, you know, a tailor or something and you don't know exactly what their gender is. Um, or if you do, um, you can select that gender tab here. So you could fill out this whole card and get very specific, but chances are if you put in lots of specific information, you are not going to find what you're looking for. So it's better to cast a broader net um, with this particular service than to get really ultra specific. So we've put in our search terms. We'll hit search. I'm looking for Pless on the census. So I bet he didn't have his name down as Pless. So we're going to edit the search a little bit and we'll just call it P and sounds like similar in initials. We'll check all those boxes. So now we're going to get all of the P. Calhouns who were born around 1860 in Kiwi, South Carolina. Hit search. Aha! And sometimes that happens. <laughs> um, you don't find exactly who you are looking for. So how about we just get rid of the first name altogether. Uncheck that exact box. We still don't get any, so this wasn't a good, um, <laughs> this wasn't a good selection for me. Sorry about that, y'all. Just guessing. All right, let's try somebody else. How about Lillian Exum Limit? And she was born in Asheville, Buncombe. She was actually born in Black Mountain, but, um, and around 1880. And we'll get rid of that name. Hit search. Well, um, it's just being a little testy with me today. Let's try something else. And, and you kind of get the point. Um, searching is searching, no matter who you're looking for. Um, let's look for a will. And they're going to point you toward the different states. So we'll have to scroll down and find North Carolina. And again, this particular version of Ancestry Heritage Quest does not have all of the same items that the regular Ancestry or Ancestry Library Edition has. It is really, really pared down. They're certainly not updating it as often as they are um, the two other sites. So keep that in mind too. We're gonna use David Vance again. 
because I know I found his, his probate records on the regular ancestry. And his probate was 1840 something. If you know that information, you could just leave it blank. It's just helpful to put in some of the things that you do know. There we go. So here's the list of all the Dave advances in Buncombe County. And I happen to know, so this 1836 one, this is the man we're after. I'm gonna look at that record. And from here on out, it's exactly the same as Ancestry Library Edition. Note, when you look at some of these records, like this one here, it's telling you not all the information on the record image has been transcribed. And for most, most of these older wills, that's, that's for good reason. Um, it would take a really long time to do all that. Um, but actually look at the record to see what all is there. Um, this particular record has a lot more than just his name and uh, probate date. We also have tons of like hand-drawn drawings of his lands, lots of receipts from debtors, his um, inventory of household goods. Um, so don't just look at the surface of a record, always open it up and see what there is to see. And again, just like in Ancestry Library Edition, you can save this record up here in the top right hand corner, either by emailing it to yourself, which is what the send image home tab is, or save it to the computer that you are actually working. Okay, so I'm wondering, are there any questions about either of these? I'll try to get back to my chat here so I can see. Oop. Which one would I start with? Um, so depending on what you have access to, I would start with Ancestry Library and, and everyone has access to that right now um, through at least May. So um, I would start with Ancestry Library just because it has essentially everything that um, regular Ancestry has. Um, and it's gonna be easier to find what you're looking for. Heritage Quest is, is really, really pared down. So, um, you know, you can find some stuff on there and it'll certainly be good if you have, um, you know, like a, a quick biography project you're working on or you just wanna scroll through the censuses, um, but library edition is a lot better as far as looking for more specific information. Anybody else, any questions? If you'll just put them in the chat. Can we use these from home? Yes. So Ancestry Library Edition is available right now through the end of May to use at home. Typically you would have to come in to the library to use Ancestry Library Edition, but Heritage Quest is always available. Um, but with either of them, you'll have to log in with your Buncombe County Library card. Let me search Italy here. Um, I think Library Edition has some foreign materials. Let's take a look here and see. If I can remember. Okay. So if I was looking for specific records from a, a, a country that was not in the United States, the first thing I would do is go to the card catalog so search card catalog. And then we can scroll down to the bottom. You see this filter by location. So I want records that are from Europe. And I'm looking for Italy. Oh, 
Aha. So there you are. Yes, there are some Italian records in here. Just note <laughs> that they are not going to be in English. Um, so most of them have not been translated for any reason. Um, so you definitely um, need to know exactly what you're looking for or uh, know how to, how to translate that. Anyone else? Any questions? Well, okay then. So um, if nobody else has any more questions, um, I want to just show you one more time how to get to Ancestry Library Edition and Heritage Quest really quickly and easily. Um, and if you come up with something before I'm done, put it in the chat, but otherwise we'll wrap up. So show you one more time how to get to Ancestry Library Edition. I have to wait on that to go away. Okay, so you'll go to the Buncombe County Public Libraries page, and I usually do this with a quick Google search, but you can go to buncombecounty.org and type in slash governing slash departments slash library slash default, and that'll get you there as well. Um, so once you're on the library homepage, you'll scroll down to virtual library. and scroll down about halfway down the page to featured resources. Here's the link to sign on to Ancestry and there is the link to sign on to Heritage Quest right there next to each other. Okay, well, if there are no other questions, I wanna thank everybody for coming to our little webinar. This is the first time uh, thing for us, but we're gonna keep doing it on Tuesday mornings at 11 o'clock. Um, so next week is, what is next week? Oh, next week is with um, one of my favorite people of all time, Dr. Dan Pierce, who's at UNC Asheville. He's going to come talk to us about his brand new book, um, Tar Heel Lightning. I almost said corn from a jar. That was the old one. Um, he's going to come talk to us about Tar Heel Lightning. Um, so think about moonshine, bring your moonshine questions with you. Um, and then the week after that, which is May 5th, um, we're going to be doing some kind of specific searches um, and show off how best you can find your African American ancestors in Western North Carolina using some of the tools that we use today. So um, again, thanks everybody for coming. If you have any questions later, if you think of something, you can email um, anyone in the North Carolina room at packnc, P-A-C-K-N-C, at buncombecounty.org. And um, if you wanna get out, reach out to me directly, um, it is Catherine, K-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E dot Cutshall, C-U-T-S-H-A-L-L -L at buncombecounty.org. And um, we will be so happy to have some reference questions to answer. Um, we're, we're kind of chomping at the bit to find trivia for people. So um, let us know if the North Carolina room can help you out while you're hanging out at home. Um, and otherwise, everyone have a really good afternoon. Bye.